Freshwater ecosystems around the world exist in a complex balance. When foreign or exotic species are introduced, it always puts stress on an ecosystem. And today, many are in peril. Lake Victoria is one example. Once home to hundreds of unique fish species, it's been called the freshwater heart of Africa. And the lake is dying, right before our very eyes. Lake Victoria is a real hotspot of aquatic biodiversity. Until very recently, the lake was home to over 350 unique species of cichlid fishes found nowhere else in the globe. I've been studying cichlids for many years and I find them absolutely fascinating animals. Cichlids are just extraordinary when you think about their behavior. They actually look after their young inside their mouths, inside their bodies. But however, it makes them particularly vulnerable because they can only have a limited number of young because they have to fit all their babies in their mouths. So this makes them very, very vulnerable to overfishing. Cichlids have been key to Lake Victoria's survival, keeping the lake in balance. But around 1900, the colonial British government established a large fishing industry on the lake. They introduced gill nets, which allowed larger numbers of cichlids to be caught. For decades, the lake was heavily overfished. At the same time, more and more local people began to settle by the lake. As land was cleared for agriculture, soil and fertilizer began spilling into the lake. So at the same time as the lake was being stressed with overfishing, it was also being stressed with this introduction of pollutants, fertilizers and soil. In the late 1950s, another species was introduced, and this was the Nile perch. The Nile perch is a huge, voracious predator. As Nile perch spread throughout the lake, they consumed large numbers of cichlids. The ecological balance of Lake Victoria was rapidly changing. The introduction of Nile perch had other effects as well. Unlike smaller cichlids, which local fishermen dried in the sun, Nile perch could be preserved only by being fried or smoked. More and more forest land was cleared for firewood. It really seems as if the introduction of the Nile perch was the last straw. And although for many years it seemed that the lake was able to put up with all of these different stresses on it, that really wasn't the case, and by the early 1980s, the perch populations suddenly exploded, and we saw the extinction of over half of those cichlid species from the lake. Lake Victoria itself was becoming toxic. Perch and other creatures can today inhabit only a thin region near the surface, where oxygen persists. Beneath, is a vast desert of deoxygenated water. All that can live there is a single species of shrimp, which has become the main diet of the perch. So in a tragically short period of time, Lake Victoria has gone from an extremely complex, vibrant ecosystem to a virtual monoculture of perch and shrimp. Now, if anything happens to the shrimp, the whole system will collapse and ultimately Lake Victoria will actually die. The loss of Lake Victoria would be a catastrophe of enormous proportions. A major freshwater ecosystem would be gone forever. It would also spell starvation for millions of people across East Africa who depend on the lake for survival. Many freshwater habitats around the globe are dead or dying. This is especially dangerous because there is so little fresh water on Earth. If we thought of the world's water as filling a bathtub, 
all the fresh water on earth would amount to only one teaspoonful. And of that, only a tiny fraction is available to us. If there's one thing that we should learn from this lesson of the tragedy of Lake Victoria, it's exactly how important, vital, these aquatic ecosystems are to our very lives.